the other day when uh, I'd made my video about the Viking Age, I'd spoke brief briefly about the Irmansul and how Charlemagne had uh, his men cut it down in the year 772 in the Saxon Wars. Now, the Irmansul, it was a, uh, a large tree, a large tree trunk. Um, and I have made up a uh, sort of uh, demonstration to show how it was used by uh, the Saxons and Germanic pagans and to a broader extent the uh, the entire European people. They all had some ritual involving a tree such as this, whether they were uh, Nordic, Germanic, uh, Celtic, Hellenic, Slavic, whatever. They all had some ritual involving a tree such as the Irmansul. So now I will show you my demonstration and I've also got some random facts about this uh, ritual that they had. So enjoy. Now, the Irmansul, as I said, it was like a hollowed out tree trunk. Uh, and I will be using this as my example as the Irmansul. Now, of course, I would imagine that the Irmansul itself was uh, much more magnificent. It was much more impressive than this little tree stump here. Uh, if I had to guess, I would have, I would assume that the Irmansul was an ash tree, because, of course, in Germanic paganism, uh, Yggdrasil was an ash tree, and the Irmansul was meant to represent that. Now, the Irmansul, it was a very important. It was used as a, uh, as part of the May, the uh, May Queen and the May King games. Now, these games are very ancient. They were, uh, of course, they occurred every May, annually. And in these games, the young people, whether they were male or female, they both participated. Uh, the females, of course, competed for the title of May Queen, while the males participated for the title of May King. I believe the age that these uh, young people participated in these games, I believe they were either, I think they were 14 usually, at the age of 14. Uh, I believe the girls that participated for the May Queen title, they were usually younger because uh, I believe they were usually, they usually hadn't had their uh, menstrual cycle yet. Now, in these games, for the males, the men, they would have athletic contests. Um, I'm sure they consisted of uh, carrying weights, lifting weights, wrestling, uh, running races, uh, different, uh, different forms of competition to gauge their strength and their uh, mental capacities. Um, for the females, I believe it involved uh, tasks such as sewing, uh, possibly cooking, and I wouldn't doubt that the females, they also participated, the young girls also participated in some, uh, some athletic contests as well. Now, the May Queen, the May King, excuse me, the games. After all the games had been completed, all the athletic contests, the mental contests, the final task for the winner, now I guess they would have had some point system devised after all of these competitions, and whoever, whichever young man had came out on top after all of this, had to perform this task. And in this task, I have my machete, I will show you the demonstration here. I have my machete here. Now, 
when the winner of all the competitions his last and final task was that he would take a sword he would take a sword and he'd, he would want to place a deep gash into the earman soul he would take a swipe at it with his sword now i will do this it's just, he would of course it wasn't a machete it was a sword but i'm using a machete here because i don't possess a sword and they would want to swing and make a large gash into the earman soul now see you would make the gash now and then the initiate, the young man, would have to pull out the sword out of the earman sword. Now, if for some reason the uh, young man had uh, made his gash into the earman sword and was unable to pull out the sword, the second place contestant, whoever had finished second, would get his attempt. And in his attempt, say, he made his gash. Wait. Say he had made his gash. All right. The first place, the uh, champion of the making games, if he is unable to pull the, machete, the uh, sword out, the second place contestant would get his turn. This wood's about rotten here. Could have done a better demonstration, but the second place contestant would get his chance to pull the sword out of the airman sword. Now, if the second place uh, contestant could not pull the sword out of the airman sword, then the third place, and it would go on until whoever was able to pull the sword out of the tree trunk. Now, and whoever managed to have the strength to pull the sword out would then be declared the making. Now, this is all throughout Europe. It wasn't just in uh, Germania that these, uh, or Scandinavia, that these games occurred. They occurred all, out, all throughout Europe, and they are very ancient. I also believe that the, uh, the Olympic games that the uh, ancient Greeks participated in. They were a derivative of the May King and the May Queen ritual. Also, after Europe was uh, more thoroughly Christianized, whenever there was uh, feudalism and when uh, kings of various kingdoms in Europe would employ knights, the tradition in a sense continued as it did. As you look through Christianity, you will notice that there are so many examples of how the Christian faith as we see it today uh, had adopted so many pagan customs and this ritual. But going back to the uh, knights that I was speaking of, usually every spring there was a series of uh, knight games, knights tournaments. And these are ultimately, as I said earlier, these are derived from the May King and the May Queen rituals. There is an English term that uh, to wear one's heart on one's sleeve. It is derived from this, uh, this saying, this uh, quote is derived from the Knights games. Whenever the Knights were, who were participating in these games, they selected a fair maiden who was uh, watching, who was a spectator in these uh, Knights games. And the Knight, he would ride his horse over to the stand and he would pick a young maiden and he would extend his lance to her. He would point to her. If she accepted his invitation, she would then tie a handkerchief around the end of his lance. The knight would then take the lance, untie the handkerchief, and then tie it around his uh, wrist. And this is just another, this is what it means to wear one's heart on one's sleeve. 
Now, all of this, uh, all these facts that I have just uh, spoke about here, I found out in these books here. These are just thoughts that they have had, and I'm just passing along the message. And it makes perfect sense. Um, and it just goes to show that even though Christianity had taken over large swaths of Europe, that they still could not take, they, the Abrahamic religion could not drown out the uh, true European spirit. So, this was just a brief demonstration it's, I'm sure it's nothing like how it was back then. I mean, I'm having to use a machete here instead of a sword. And my poor old Earman soul is fairly rotten. I'm sure that he was, the true Earman soul was much more magnificent, much larger, and uh, much more impressive than this guy here, but he serves the purpose, I suppose. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.